Hey, hey, hey! It's your captain. How y'all doing? You doing okay? Oh, man, I was, I'm running a little late today. Uh, been all over the place, but I'll tell you what, uh, we had playoff games. We still having playoff games. There's, um, we have, uh, to where we just completed game four. Tonight is game five of the, uh, Predators playoff games. So, uh, got to do best out of seven. So we got to get four wins total. And right now we're split two and two. So, uh, Friday and Sunday, uh, we went double over overtime, both games, Whew, long games, man, I'm still recovering, still recovering. It's rough. It's hard having so much fun. You yelling for hours and hours. I don't know if you've ever seen a Predators game. Maybe you can look up the highlights or something like that. But, man, I don't know if they can capture it because the crowd is intense. Uh, and it seems odd, right? Because in this day and age, we've got this huge, massive crowd of people. Of course, everybody's got their masks on and whatnot. But, but man, it's fun. It is so much fun. It's good to be out and getting it done with everybody. So today we're gonna hit some quick, uh, hey Ruby, hey, hey, Kamarowski. Uh We're gonna hit some some quick stuff. Um, I didn't know if, uh, there's a few games that uh, I've recently played. One of them I've meant to bring in here and I didn't do it. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, share with you a few thoughts and stuff. Uh, Witcher game is is out, and uh, I'm echoing. I'm echoing. Really? All right. Let me figure it out. Let me find out what's going on. I've only got one. I've only got one input right now. All the other mics are turned off. Is it is it still echoing? <clears throat> testing, testing. Am I echoing? <laughs> you got two pages open. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome <laughs> all right all right well i'm glad we were able to clear up that technical difficulty all right all right well look um yeah the witcher game just came out of course um uh one of our friends in poland they're putting it out um uh, up and coming uh game company they've they've got a couple of titles out there that are are pretty neat um, this one looks like it might be cool, but something that you guys, I don't know if you knew this or not, but there's this here company, right? Called Fantasy Flight. And this guy, Ignacy, who you guys may know, actually designed a game called The Witcher. Now, I, I know that, uh, that Ignacy, when he designed this game, uh, he had a much more complicated game in mind, uh, but they stripped it down and, and he helped them pair it out. And so from from what I understand, a uh, short conversation I had with him on it, he loves The Witcher. That's, you know, an awesome series. So, but he ended up uh, uh, making that game. Uh, hard to find that game anywhere, but you can get it through Steam. So you can play a digital version of it if you'd like. So, and I like it. I think it's a pretty cool game. It's just, you know, it's an adventure game. Feels like you go on a little bit of an adventure. Tells a little bit of a story. It's a standard Ignacy type stuff. It, it'll try to punish you if you're not good. Um, so um, there's some random dice rolling. But, I mean, what adventure game doesn't have random dice rolling? So there's that. But hey, let's get into playing some games, shall we? Let's do it. Of 
course, we got the new Neuroshima Hex app. <clears throat> it's still in development. Um, you can see right here. It says dev because, uh, you know, it's not ready yet. Not ready yet. We're getting close. We're getting close. There's there's quite a few features that we have to, to get squared away. You know, and, and somebody was asking me, like, you know, what's the big difference between this one and the other one? Um, what I found was basically what's going on here is this one's going to be, I think, more playable. So all the things that we learned from the old one are going to be corrected. Uh, we're going to be able to socially connect on this one. And what makes this one so much better than the old one is the old one has kind of died on the vine. There's no way we can keep on rolling with it. We can't improve it and do uh, new armies and stuff like that. With this one, uh, one of the reasons we're putting it all together again and recreating something that we kind of already have is because we want to be able to put those new armies out there and make sure that everybody can play on multiple platforms together and that kind of thing. So that's the big deal with this app. You know, the huge improvements between the old app and this app, um, you know, the old app worked pretty good. It worked pretty good. This one's going to be better. It's going to have a lot of little things that are going to be better than the old one. But what's really cool is our ability to continue to grow this app and uh, extend it into a larger community so that that way we can all play each other. So that's going to be fun. Uh, today I was thinking maybe if we created a game, you know, usually we play two player games, but I was thinking, why don't we see if we can, uh, oh, look at that. I don't think I can do it. I can't do it. See, just different things disabled. So, so right now we still in this development stage, we don't have the, um, the other one. You know, one thing that I didn't do is look to see if, uh, I had a recent update. I did not update this app, um, here recently. Um, so, well, we may be a little behind. We're not going to play easy mode. We're going to go hard this time. We'll go hard. And, uh, I think we're just going to, we're going to leave the old, red army behind here i think what we'll do is we'll go outpost against borgo what do you think i think that'd be fun let's try it now borgo on hard here we go i got 35 tiles left all right um well you guys know borgo uh they're all melee so I, I like trying to minimize my uh, footprint, but this guy allows me to shoot uh, people, right? But this guy allows me, so if I put it in the corner, it only gives Borgo three places where it can do damage to me, generally. But it also limits the amount of times that I can hit his guy. Now, if I put it in directly in the middle, right? then I can always put somebody next to it who is going to get be able to do two damage to him. The problem is he now has the ability to get six damage on me, right? So uh, uh, Mikeville, um, middle might be cool, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the corner because I still, hey, Dutch! I still like that that corner. I think I don't usually go very defensive. I go, you know, all out for an attack. Uh, but I think what I can do in the setup here, putting a uh, putting my guy in the corner, uh, can really make a big difference in the end. Minimize the, his ability to do damage to me. So I'm going to try that. See how that works out for us. Thirty-five tiles. Here he comes. He went in the middle. Alrighty. So now uh, this is a nice feature of the new one. And immediately it comes out and says, do you want to apply the unlucky rule? So now if we wanted to, we could move uh, our 
our unit. Since he's in the middle, we could go any place and uh, uh, maybe cause more damage to him. And I think, I think Kamarowski, you're right. So, so what I think we'll do is uh, we will not apply the unlucky rule. We'll actually move. So now we've got an ability to set up and we'll move this guy right next to him. That'll give us uh, more areas to attack him. Minimize only by one his ability to attack us. But let's see what we got here. So there you go. He's got a guy that's going to go off on a five. Well, shoot. Mm -mm -mm. Well, we ain't got a battle. Uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move. No reason to stay there when you got to move. We'll move there. Then I think I'll put this guy right there. So he's got some movement. Well, there you go. Well, the 2 1, we could do 2 1 0 and hit him there, which is cool. Hey, Ruben. Good to see you, man. How's things? You still on the fence for Gen Con? You going to Gen Con, Ruben? We got another ranged attack. I think we're going to keep the ranged attacks. I really like this guy doing two damage, though. That would be nice. And this guy's got a four right now. I hate that. Mm. Actually, I think I'm going to get rid of this ranged. But I'm going to have this two damage. I like doing lots of damage. And that also takes away this plus one and whatever. So I'll just do this. And this one will help to fill that area up. Hopefully this will all work out. Let's see. Oh, he's got the net. But his net goes off on a one. Ooh, got the big boy there. Mobile armor. Got a two and a three. And he's got the melee, plus he's got the um, the ranged, which is nice. So, I can't stop that guy from doing anything. But I can gum sure put this guy over here take that guy out this will all work out Pacific con okay well that's good yeah dice tower West that's cool no no there's in uh, uh uh, Ruby, the the net thing, uh, I have no idea. You know that grayed out bit. I, maybe we can do something about that, but I'm not sure. I think I want a battle. I, although I do like having another ranged weapon, but I think I want a battle and minimize what all we can do. So I'm thinking about putting this guy out here, right? And I've got movement on him. So later I can reposition him. 
But right now, I'll be taking that guy out. <clears throat> I wish I could do, you know, this and have that too on the other side. But it is what it is. I want to be able to do more damage, but I think that's pretty good. And I've got a re ability to reposition him. I feel like that's pretty good. And then we got a battle. So he will do one damage here. He'll do one damage there. But I will free up this and I'll do lots of damage to him. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let's get it done. Yep, start a battle. Yep, one damage. Got another damage. All right, now let's take him out. There you go. Now phase two and phase one. There you go. So now he's down to 14. And then I hit him, that guy, and I hit him again. There you go, 12. See, it all worked out okay. Oh, well now we got something great. He's got me locked down again. That gummit. What a joik. What a joik. I don't have any way to stop him. I can move up on him. <laughs> and I can stop that. <sighs> yeah, I don't think we're going to battle. What's going on, guys? All right, so we're, here's what we're going to do. I think I'm going to... Oh, I don't have to use that. Hey, I, mean, I always forget. So I've got this movement. So I can definitely move him up to here. And then I can put this behind this guy. Got a different movement. <sighs> Thinking. Yeah, hold on a second. So. That module's doing really good on this guy here. I really like that. Um, because he's going to end up doing uh, four more damage. This guy, I can put him up here. He'll do two more damage. No, four more damage. That's eight. You know what? And this guy is not, I can't take him out. But I don't need this movement. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I take this and I move him up here. And then I just freaking protect this guy. Now he's going to do three damage to me. I get it. But. Do more damage to him than he does to me. Oh, I forgot about that three taking that guy out. Dang gum it, Eric. You jerk, you stupid. Oh, man. Ah, totally messed up. I totally messed up. Man. What an idiot. What an idiot. Ah, I screwed up. All right, all right, all right. Let's see if I can recover. I mean, he's down to eight. Surely I can do something. He's going to go off on a five. Well...
Can't move him yet. That guy's a three. So I can get that done. All right. So if I take this and I move him here, face him that way. Right. Take one of these, put it back here. I mean, he's going to get killed, but he's going to do two more damage. He'll do two damage. This guy will do two damage. Then I can assure that he, no, he won't because of that guy. He's going to put a guy here and there's nothing I can do. I can hit this guy. We'll do that on a three. That'll be okay. It's not great. Man, I hate that. Oh, he's got a grenade. Oh, he saved it. Okay. He's got that guy on a three. We're going to mutually, mutual destruction on that. Um... This guy's going to survive because on a three he gets hit, this will go off. And I don't think on a three he'll get hit. He'll choose between this or this. Can't. Yeah. Yeah, the medical heal heal the HQ for one of those the one of the twos for this two and this two will kill that guy. Um, this guy's a three. Deck him it. Not a lot I can do with this guy. Well, I got to get rid of one of these. Guess I mean I can take one of his attacking guys out, which is pretty good. That'll give me room. Uh I think it just gets worse for me, not better, because then he'll be able to attack this guy. I think I'd be better off just pulling the trigger. I don't know. We'll see. Yep. There you go. So I, I feel like it, it cleared the air a little bit, but I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm catching up to him. I don't like that. Now we got a movement. I think this is a good a time as any to use that movement to move my HQ for sure. And remove this guy. And we can put a plus to protect him or our HQ. I don't know, plus one doesn't really help me as much. I think we'll go this way. We'll move this guy. And like we could even move him back here. Here he doesn't do, doesn't hurt anything. Here we could open up some possibilities, but he'll get one damage on us. He will get one damage on us. I think I, I'm okay with the one damage. 
And I'm thinking about hmm, trying to minimize what he can do to me. I could just use this as a as a shield, so he can't put something there. Of course, he could put something here, but he won't have plus one on the initiative. Um, I like having these lanes open, though. Mm. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And uh, take this guy, move him here. And go ahead and threaten his HQ with that. Do, do, do. All right, what do we got now? Got 12 tiles, got another movement. That's excellent. That is excellent. We move. And <clears throat> this scoper, as long as the scoper is connected to an enemy module, that module gives bonuses to outpost instead. So I could get that one a three. That's about it. Uh, not so helpful. I don't know if I want to battle though. Eh, it won't hurt. All right. We're going to move again. And we're just going to exchange one for one on this. Yeah, we're just going to exchange one for one. Now, there's a whole thing where I could have made that guy right there a three, and I could have taken his three out, and, you know, but... Anyway, I don't I just don't think it's worth it. I think we're doing fine. And now he's down to a 7. And I get rid of that guy. There we go. That's nice. He's got some movement. Okay, we got a scoper. So we got this uh, assassin, what do they call it? Sniper. Uh, so one, but not, not the HQ. So I could do one damage to him. It won't take him out. I could move him twice. I don't think he's got any movement left. If I'm remembering correctly. So this guy is the only guy I'm worried about. And I can move two away. And then he has to put more guys down there. Which he can. Um, the attack is not going to do me a whole lot of good, unfortunately. Of course, I could save it. But I kind of like this idea of putting this guy, I don't know, back here somewhere. And then taking this guy and moving him. And we're going to move him down there. Just to frustrate him. Oh, he's got a plus. Well, he got rid of his plus attack. All right. I guess that makes sense. So he's going to do 
four damage to us. I think we're going to move again. We're not going to do this. We're going to move one time. And then I think we take this guy. Now he's going to go on a one. This will go on a three. We'll do two damage to him. That's all right. Not great, but whatever. All right. He's going to do a little damage to us. But he didn't do anything. He got rid of him. I don't know. Why would he have done that? He should have clogged this up. All right. I mean, I would complain, but that'll do. I like it. He's got two tiles left. Final battle. Mm-hmm. Right. Ah, there you go. Well, there you go. Initiative two. Here, have two more damage. Well, how about that? Initiative zero. Let's take out some guys. There we go. There's the answer. 11 to two. Look at that. The captain's getting better. He can beat them on hard sometimes. Of course, I didn't understand why he didn't block that guy in. I mean, he would have done a little more damage. To, we still would have won. It wouldn't have mattered. But but still, I think he gave up at the end. So, anyway, that is that. That's a pretty good game. That was all right. It was okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to find out a little more about the, um, the uh, what's going going to be rolling out what changes we're going to see in this i'll make sure i get the updates uh, i'm going to make sure that i put that thing across about the um the net uh put that in there again to make sure that they uh understand that that um, i mean they do everything else so cool it would be nice if they came up with a better way of showing that something was netted so um yeah yeah Anyway, all right. Well, hey, I got a few things I want to talk to you about. So, uh, so let's let's do that. Let's talk about it. And if I can find the button, there we go. Now, I don't know that Ignacy's going to get any money for us going and getting this Witcher game, but the Witcher Adventure game is on Steam, and it's a great playable game. Uh, nice thing about it, is you can play it online or you can play it offline. When you play offline, you can have up to four characters. You can do um, AI if you want, or you can even go to where you just play it solo. Now, the one thing I'll say about playing it solo is one of the, whenever you do your quest goals, you can set for a short or a long game, one, three, or five quests, but each one of your quests have a, a thing on them called support. And um, in order for you to get the victory points for support, someone has to um, use your support or for you to obtain victory points uh um, off of their quest, you have to give them support. 
So, and I think you get six victory points if you support them and they get three for, and they get three because you supported them. So, um, you know, that's, that's the only thing about not playing with somebody else, but like, uh, just taking a look at, at the game itself. Um, this is the board. It populates it. Um, it, it you can uh, select a quest, the different quests, and it'll tell you what you need for each one of the quests. There's two side quests here, um, two side quests there. This is the main quest here. Um, and then you got the support, which I talked about before. The consequences of it, which if all you're playing is one quest, um, the consequences don't really generally matter. Um, so, you know, you could take one of the quests and so now you need to go to um, Tredegor, which is right here, right here, where your main quest is. And uh, but you need two of these um, square red things. So it's it's kind of weird, but the red tokens turn into um, uh, the the red. How do, how do they call that? They're, they're, they say it's like red investigation tokens turn into like knowledge or something like that. Red knowledge. I don't know. Something like that. Anyway, so you're trying to get um, enough of those to turn them in. And uh, you can get them by fighting and stuff like that. Upgrading your skills. Um, it says here that uh, obtain a protective ointment. So you go to Maribor. And if you go to Maribor, you get that protective ointment and you'll get three victory points. So you can look at the map and find Maribor, uh, which Maribor is right here, which is your side quest. Um, and then the other side quest is pay some peasants to help you. So you spend four of these, I forgot what they're called, um, proofs. Oh, uh, that's what it was, is proofs, leads, and gold. So you can spend uh, four gold, and you'll get four victory points. Right now, we got three gold. So we need to ain't, we need to collect more gold to be able to do that. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, click on it. The check mark, will, there'll be a check mark there, and you'll be able to click on it to, uh, to do that. So, um, and that's pretty much it. And then you have these things down here that you can do. Uh, which I can move this up a little bit so you guys can see it, maybe. Oh, hold on. How do I do that? Well, I don't know how to do it. Like that. Anyway, so you got uh, travel, and then there's like this fast travel. Then you have develop, where you develop your own character. Uh, you have investigation. You can brew potions. Of course, we don't have any potions um, to brew. Uh, you have to uh, gain skills in order to do that, which is this develop thing. And then you got rest, which is to heal things. So whenever you take damage or anything, you actually take the damage on your abilities. So maybe you, the first damage you take, you take on fast travel. So then you can't fast travel. So that's the mechanisms of this, of this game. And um, there's always like some bad guys in the area right now. We just see that there's one bronze enemy in this area. So we move through that area. We're going to have to confront a bronze enemy, which is sort of a random monster. You turn it over and you find out what it is. And there's different uh, color um, um, enemies. Uh, there's also um, what they call, um, I forgot what they call those uh Basically, it's just bad news. It's like doom or something like that. And um, uh, so if you're unsuccessful at doing something, you may take one of these doom cards and it'll it'll have different things, different penalties that you might get. So. See you, Ruben. Anyway, so that is um, that's sort of the Witcher. It's a really nice, easy game to play. And it allows you to sort of do that adventure thing where you, you actually have the quest and, and whatnot. And if you take a minute, 
to read this is called crow pass and there's a little bit of a story to that and there's a reason that you want to protect get that uh, protective ointment and whatnot it's because uh, you discover a mysterious beast haunting crow pass is an overgrown wyvern uh, so you got to fight a battle so protective ointment would sounds good to me i, I think i want a protective shield if if it were me, but you know, it's the Witcher. He's going to go with the ointment. So anyway, that's, that's that. So thought maybe if you're really burning for some Witcher love and you, you, you read all this stuff and you're going all in for the Witcher, maybe you want to play something. Hey, Ignacy has, has this wonderful game and you can play it on Steam. Thought I'd bring that up for you. So there is that. Um, let's see. What else do I got here? Oh, let's see. I just got, of course, you know, one of, one of my favorite portal games is Empires of the North. Now, Imperial Settlers is cool. I like 51st State better just because I like the theme better. And now we got Moloch and that is pretty awesome. So Moloch's always messing with you. It, it changes the dynamic of the game. It's pretty cool. But uh, Empires of the North is just, man, it flows. It flows. The mechanics in it and everything, I just really love it. And now this box is pretty well full. I might be able to squeeze one more expansion in here without getting rid of the insert. But it's getting hard. So um, we ended up getting... Uh, the Japanese islands, we ended up with the, the barbarian horde and, and of course the Roman banners, right? Plus it came with uh, uh, four different factions to begin with. So in each one of those expansions were, were two different decks. So like 10, we're up to 10 and we just got the the latest expansion which is the egyptian egyptian kings so i just got the egyptian kings in haven't played it yet uh they look pretty neat of course if you want to see gameplay of it uh you know the brothers they're all the time playing um uh, these games and i saw that they did egyptian kings so you can you can take a look at that but we got the uh the new cards and everything for them um nice you know it's what you expect uh except that they've got special powers you know and they interact a different way um so that that makes them <laughs> more unique and i notice that you get one more of these so you get a neutral um what's that called where you move it around on the donut of action so you get one of those as well a neutral one so I'm kind of excited about it. I was looking on the website, and right now, oh, Luke and Paul have got that thing off. It's 20% off. You go to the website, you get you can get uh, pre-ordered on that. Yeah, so uh, you can get pre-ordered on that, and it's 20% off. So I thought, man, that's all right. And check it out. If, like... <laughs> How do I say this? That replayability just becomes so huge with this. And uh, this may be your favorite faction. You never know. It could be your favorite faction. So for right for right now, if you get on there and you order uh, the uh, Empires of the North Egyptian Kings, put it on pre-order, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Hey! It's a raid. It's Paula. What are you doing, Paula? How's things? It's Paula Deming. How about it? She's all right. Yeah, hey, y'all. It's good to have you here. We're talking a little portal. Yeah. I was, you know, Paula, I was looking uh, for um, a hat for Matthew, trying to always trying to find him a new hat. I was in some uh, 
Nashville um, Nashville uh, souvenir sh shops and uh, looking at uh, different hats with the uh, Tennessee logo, and I found a camo hat. But I'm not sure that that's Matthew's style, camo. Anyway, hey, they just sent me Vienna Connection, uh, the detective thing. I thought maybe I would open it and show you what's inside so you actually get the physical look at it. You finished it already. Way to go, Dutch. Way to go, Dutch. Dutch is getting lots done. I haven't been able to play it, nor have I played uh, the kings be uh, of Egypt because the uh, Egyptian kings because of all the Predators games. That's all I've been doing is going to the Predators. That's why I can't hardly talk. You can hear me. I'm hoarse. I'm hoarse. So, uh, here, let me hit this desktop. I'll show you. Vienna Connection. Look at there. Right? Looks nice. Got the rule book. Now, just like most of the detective uh, rules, the rules are not overly complicated. They're not very complicated at all. There's a mission end. Here's an appendix. So there's some instructions and effects. So there's a few things that you might want to know about how things actually work. So they have an appendix for that that you can look up particular things. And uh, so that's nice. And there's the end of the appendix. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's the game's end. But that's the basic rules right there. These two sheets right here. That's it. We got this and that this right here is i mean that's sure okay i'll give you this but like man that's almost nothing so you give you an idea of the zones there and uh the setup is like half a page right and most of that is just a picture so i mean just like any detective uh story this is uh, not hard as far as the rules go. What's hard is getting it played right, you know? Then you get these mission packs. Now, I will tell you, there's something hard in the bottom of this thing right here. I'm not going to open it because it didn't tell me to. And I like to adhere to that. Mission 2. We got Mission 3. Mission 4. CIA Documents. And then we got this thing. I want y'all to see this. This is top secret stuff right here. Right? Got the top secret going. Pretty thick. A lot going on there. Now, I haven't opened it. It's thick. It feels like a big old wad of paper. Feels like completely full. Don't know what's in there. I really want to open it. I really want to open it. But I won't open it yet. I'll wait. Oh, wait. So we got these sheets. We got white zone, blue zone, yellow zone, red zone. Look. So we got different man in black. Got that going on. Then there's man in black. This is mission two. White rabbit. Right? This is white B, white rabbit. There you go. And you got another mission. So each mission has these different things with the different zones. All right. Pretty interesting. Now, here's the best part, I think. Now, I haven't seen this. Oh, sure it was, Komorowski. Sure. It was unsealed. <laughs> so we got the, uh, got the old wine bottle meeple huh got the wine bottle meeple and the money meeple now look for this is worth the price of admission right here you get a wine bottle and a money meeple you're doing okay as eh, star meeple whatever got a little shield meeple but man wine and money you know that's what i'm talking about right there that portal they they sure do know how to deliver they give you the wine and the money and they got all these little sugar packets in there so these are nice 
you know that's that's nice that they they're thinking you you're gonna need some sugar for your coffee so they throw that in there that's cool of course now they're gonna get sued because i said that but it's all right but this is the pack of cards right so what do we have we have four missions right four or five missions four actual missions and a big old thing of top secret documents oop, oop, oop. big old thing of top secret documents so that's what comes in there and this if you didn't do the pre-order this will be shipping or be available on at the store very soon very soon so keep an eye out vienna connection i think this is going to be a good one i like the idea of the uh, cold war espionage rather than just a straight up detective game i like how that that may play out i think it'll be a, a kind of a cool story i think each of us is going to have a um a different what would you say a different uh outcome we'll have a different um uh, play experience you know uh no matter uh uh, what you do as you make these different choices, I think those choices are going to have larger effects on how it actually plays out. Um, you know, if you fail uh, at some mission or something, I imagine that's just going to make it harder for the next time and that kind of thing. So Ruby says it's going to be Thursday. Hey, <clears throat> some of my good friends, they were, they're moving to Nashville. And um, they brought a couple of games. One of them was the downfall of Pompeii. Well, thank you, Dutch. No, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's funny, uh, Kavaroski. My experience with the very first detective, first game, um, I found myself a little sympathetic for people and, and covering for that one guy who let the person slip through. I, I won't say a whole lot about it. I'll just say that much. And uh, I found myself almost lying about it. It was a weird thing. It was like a, some kind of weird sympathetic thing that I did. And, um, and it hurt me in the end. I got a worse score, but I feel like I... I help somebody. <laughs> I'm just a sucker, you know. So this Pompeii, uh, Downfall of Pompeii, so simple game. Just a very, very, very simple game. Uh, not a whole lot to it. What I what I tell you about is you get a volcano. Now look at this. You get a volcano, and it uh, it goes together. It goes together pretty well too. And um, it's kind of it's I don't know. It's some kind of plastic. It, it's almost like uh, like the aluminum stuff that they put uh, um, air conditioning vents together with or something. It's got that kind of uh, feel to it. I don't think this thing's going to get tore up. So it works really well. But you got this. This is what the game board looks like. Right like that. Not much to it, right? But if you notice, there's numbers. Like that, eight and uh this four but both the eight and four have the same color buildings right so um uh that's that's kind of a kind of a thing and you're pulling out your you're taking your pieces and you're putting them out on these spots based on the various cards that you'll draft so you could take a three or you know this purple three or an aqua six and say well I'll, I'll put my guy in the aqua six right and so you're putting people out there until the volcano explodes Ex volcano explodes and then you stop putting people out and you stop with the whole card thing and instead you're trying to move your people and it's strange because uh, you move as far it's kind of like a finca in a way so However many people are on that square that you're at, that's how far you can move. So if it's just you, you can only move one space. If it's you and somebody else, you can move more spaces. So you kind of want to be with other people. But at the same time, the lava is starting to flow. 
and you are putting lava tiles down and killing folks. So if you want to kill your enemy, you know, your friend that's playing next to you, <clears throat> then, uh, then you don't want to be next to him. But if you want to get out and move further, then maybe it would be a good idea to be next to them. So it's kind of one of those push-pull kind of mechanisms on that, which is really cool. And the other one that I, I failed to bring with me is um, is uh, Dice Game. Um, which, man, I've been hot on these dice games lately. Like, I've been really liking these dice games. And I ended up with um, uh, Fleet the Dice Game. Now... It's two sheets, but it's not as big as Hadrian's Wall. It's not like that at all. And I, again, I think I like the Fleet the Dice game better than I like Fleet. Now, Fleet comes with some expansions and there's other things that you could do there. But, like, I really enjoyed Fleet the Dice game. I think that it's, it's darn worth, worth playing. If you, you kind of like Fleet, but you're like, man, I don't really remember... How does the rules on that go? And and like you got to get a license, then you got to get the boat. Is that how that go? You know all this kind of stuff and trying to remember all that bit. Like all that gets reduced to you roll these dice and you take these actions. And as you you have to get a certain action like a shrimp action twice in order to get a license. And then once you get the license, the next time you get a shrimp action, that's a boat. And then you go two more down and then you get the special license. So you're upgrading your license as you're going down or are um, launching more boats. Some of them, it's specifically a license or specifically a boat. And some of them, it's either. And you make the choice between them. And uh, then there's town actions and stuff like that. I'll tell you what, I really enjoyed it. I think that uh, Fleet the Dice Game, is it's a keeper. It's a keeper. I'm definitely going to add that to my collection. They turned me on to that. Now, Pompeii, I think it's one of those games where, like, you play it, you have a little fun. It's definitely take that. You're burning people up and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's a game with a little bit of attitude. You get to throw people into the volcano. That's kind of fun, you know. Uh, it's it's a, one of those things where, like, uh, when I play Godfather, you know, Eric Lang game, Godfather, I really like throwing people into the Hudson River, you know. So by the end of that, uh, you're, you're looking, uh, you know, you look at the um, uh, board near the end of a round and you got 13 people laying in the in the river. You think, man, this is a good game. So if you're into that, you might like that Pompeii game. So um, anyway, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. That seems like quite enough. Hey, guess what time it is? It's 2.30. I've been on here an hour. So, um, yeah, I'm going to put in, Ruby, about that uh, net. We'll make sure that we get that done. We're going to do some, see if we can get some update uh, information on the app, see where that's going, where we're headed, when we can expect different features, uh, more armies, that kind of thing, uh, being able to add additional players. Um, so there's lots of questions for us as far as... Uh, what they're doing in development. So I think right now, one of the things that they're really concentrating on and the programmers or the app may be concentrating on is the Vienna connection. I think they got it all completed though. So, um, but they may be doing a little, um, uh, a little tech, tech help and stuff like that. Yeah. Tonight we got to get it done. Predators game tonight. We got to get it done. So, uh, hopefully we'll get, we'll get three under our belt and we'll come back to Nashville on Thursday and play another game. And maybe that'll be our fourth win. And we'll say goodbye to the hurricane. We don't like them hurricanes. Hey, y'all be good. Have a great week. Try to have a good weekend. I'll see you next week. Adios.